Mark Gray, uh, Chairman and CEO of uh, Allegiance Coal, um, now a producing um, ASX uh, metallurgical coal miner uh, with two assets, uh, producing assets in the US, uh, a third uh, development asset, which should um, come into production in, in two years' time and, and, and uh, a development asset in Northwest British Columbia. Mark, good to see you. Uh, we saw you back in, in April, and I think we saw you before that as well. Uh, the story's coming along uh, nicely. Kind of strange times to be talking about coal. We've got uh, various countries agreeing to wean themselves off of uh, thermal coal. But in that, in that backdrop, has it been easy to uh, do business? Well, of course, you know, you made the distinction, thermal and, um, and uh, metallurgical coal. We are um, metallurgical coal focused. Um, my shareholders have mandated me to invest in, in metallurgical coal. Um, they would hang me if I touched thermal coal. Uh, so as far as our sector is concerned, um, you know, these are um, pretty strange times. We've, we're experiencing uh, prices never seen before uh, in our sector and um, the opportunities uh, are really quite uh, fantastic. Um, and I don't see it letting off, to be honest, for the next 12 months or for, for next year. So a uh, great opportunity for our company. Timing couldn't have been better. Um, and that is luck. It's never never really that planned. But, you know, we're, we're taking advantage of that opportunity right now. Okay, well, look, talking of timing, I want to talk about um, two acquisitions you made. I think there's a, a smaller uh, project, Warrior, which is producing cash flow uh, nice, uh, and then one you made more recently. So let's start with uh, Warrior. I mean, why, why did you pick that up? Well, um, as you know, as the market will will we'll know, New Oak is our focus. That's the asset that we are starting up, uh, restarting from care and maintenance, and, and we recommence production in uh, in June in earnest. And we're stepping that up uh, nicely. It's I think I'm probably one to two months behind where I'd like to be, but um, in in the overall scheme of things, with the 750 million ton asset, that's really neither here nor there. It's making good linear progression, and it's on the right track. And in actual fact, we're we're shipping our first cargo uh, next week. Right, that's right. Because you, 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 I think you, when we spoke, you planned to do that in, in, in June. So you're you're sort of three, four months off there. Uh, June was the startup. Uh, uh, oh, that first cargo should have gone out um, September. So it's it's you know it's a, it's it's a couple of months late. It's going out in in November instead, and 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 that's because you know I couldn't get the second production unit operating. I've just got one production unit operating. That's a function as of. I've said in our ASX announcements of um, of trying to sustain our workforce, and you know, it's building a workforce is, is the biggest challenge, not the geology. Um, so anyway, getting back to your question, so New York is making good progression. Uh, the Black Warrior acquisition uh, was one of those purely opportunistic acquisitions. I was in Alabama. Um, as, as I am uh, negotiating offtake coal to blend with our new out coal uh, that we export out of the Gulf. And, um, and one of the people with whom I was negotiating offtake um, uh, was 82 years old. He'd, been, he'd owned this business for 35 years. And rather than talk offtake, he wanted to talk sale. And, um, and um, you know, the business was at the margin, had needed an investment in capital and energy. Uh, there was a fantastic opportunity there. I could see it. And uh, and so we, you know, we acquired that asset um, and it, it's, you know, existing cash flow. So there's a bit, but there's a difference in ca cash flow and making money, right? So w w were they making money? Can you make money? So the mine, the, this particular asset had been operating for 11 years and uh, for, certainly for the first, I would say, 10 years was making uh, fantastic profits, you know, for a family business. Um, um, but it margins, you know, margins were reducing as uh, strip ratios were going up. Uh, I could see that the equipment that they were use, using was way too small um, and replace the equipment with, um, you know, with, with larger excavators, larger dump trucks, you know, invest the capital that needed, 
they were only operating five day shifts a week. Um, so with, with small equipment, so it occurred to me, well, this is reasonably straightforward. You hang on to the existing workforce, reduce the number of machines and spread the workforce across a day and a night shift and get 10 shifts a week. Um, same labor cost, uh, generally same consumable cost, but you're increasing your productivity by two and a half times. So, you know, that has a natural effect of reducing your operating costs by 60, 60 to 70%, just literally over, over the period of a month. Um, so a business that was at the margin could be making a fantastic margin within a month. Added to that is that the mine owner was selling a wonderful coking coal to Alabama Power. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a you know, good quality um, high volume uh, coking coal um, that on the seaborne market today commands a price of around about $390 a tonne. And it was being sold to Alabama Power at um, a price about one fifth of that. Um, so, you know, add some add some barge and port costs. That's about twenty, let's say twenty five dollars of logistics. Get it onto a vessel and sell it for you know, you know, pick a number somewhere in the three hundreds. Uh, and uh, and that was the opportunity, and, and and I could see it, and and. I could see it could happen very, very quickly. So, you know, that, that's why we uh, decided to acquire that asset. So, so that, that, was, that was opportunistic. You, you found a way of making the, the economics work for you. The other acquisition that you've done since we spoke is something, I actually quite like this one. Um, I, I think it was really good for you because, you know, the obviously Black Warrior, 10 year life of mine, you may extend that a little bit, who knows. This one, it's, it's bigger, it's great coal, um, I think you got a good deal there, but you, you got a lot of stick in the market. Why was that? Timing, really. Um, you know, the, the, the market loved the asset. Um, I think they would have liked to have seen me have done this transaction uh, at the end of this quarter or maybe next quarter after, you know, this quarter's um, cash flow, uh, w which is going to show a very significant jump or, or indeed next quarter. Um, so I, I think timing was the issue, but but unfortunately, you know, I had no control of timing. Uh, the vendor was a very major uh, coal group, uh, one of the largest uh, coal mining companies uh, during the nine uh, during um, well over the last 50, 60 years, um, and um, you know they set the pace, um, they set the timetable on the transaction. I've been working on this transaction for eight months. Uh, you know, such as its its quality and 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 the importance of it to to, to my strategy for allegiance. You know, the, the, this was the asset that I really wanted, and I, I could have come with or not with Black Warrior, but this was the asset, and uh, and I'm you know I'm, I'm extremely pleased that we finally uh, closed the uh, the acquisition agreement. Uh, we'll complete the acquisition. Uh, once the uh, coal leases and the permits are transferred, uh, there's no conditions to completion. It's going to happen. And then I'll focus on on the development work required to get it into production 2023. Um, so was, was, it, was it, how, much, how much could you actually, you, you say you're, you're, you're being deferential to the the owner because they're, they're, they're way bigger than you and they've been doing it a long time, like they're in total control of the timing. Could you not have delayed it? Was it a case of if you don't buy it, you lose it? Was there was there com there's competitive tension? I other people looking at this thing. There were other bidders, um, and I, a couple of whom were uh, significantly bigger than ourselves, um, and, um, and 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 who had assets uh, in in the region. So the the acquisition would have been extremely synergistic for them, uh, as it is for us, because we're, Black Warrior is only twenty five kilometers up the road. You know, so it's it's very nice. We've got a real nice little hub here now. Okay, but, but, but Black Warrior is smaller. This is, this is big. I mean, let's talk about what you actually bought here, because I need to I need to understand why you like. It. I've I've looked at it. It looks it looks really significant. So what do you what do you what do you think about it? Two things really, um, or perhaps three. Um, it's got scale. It's you know it um, it's it's got more than 150 million tons of in situ coal. Um, it's some of the best quality 
coke and coal on the market it is amongst the best it has a brand on the market there there are several mines in the region that mine this coal it's it's what we call a blue creek uh, and and this is a mid-vol version um uh, and the mid-vol blue creek uh i think today is selling for 400 and ten dollars a ton it, it, it's leading the market on on seaborne pricing along with us low vol it's it's trade it's trading and selling at a premium to australian premium low vol benchmark coking coal you know, right such just explain so, what that means why, why is it trading for more than regular coal well, um and you know premium coals do trade at a premium and a discount to premium low vol benchmark out of australia historically but um, at the moment, um, you know, that seems to be the norm uh, because uh, of the ban on uh, Australian uh, coking coal into China at the moment. And, and China uh, has uh, locked into uh, the US uh, production as an alternative source of supply to, to Australian coking coal. So we've seen US and Canadian coking coals, uh, but, but more particularly US coking coals trading at uh, a quite significant premium uh, to um, you know to premium low vol benchmark australia but what's the what's the characteristic of the coal that this particular mine produces why is it selling for 410 and not 390 or 400 so first of all it's it's volatiles it's volatile matter it's a mid vol coking coal so the the steel mills and their coke oven blends they like to arrive with, a, with volatile matter in the what we call the mid-range, which is about, say, 22 to 28 uh, volatiles. So they take a combination of low-vol coal and high-vol coal, blend it, and they like to arrive at this mid-vol, um, mid-volatile matter uh, position. And uh, so if you've got a mid-vol coal, it just sits in there naturally. It doesn't upset the volatile balance. <laughs> Uh, the second thing is its coke strength. It's hot coke strength, what we call CSR or coke strength after reactivity. Um, the coke strength of this coal is plus or minus 70. Um, once you get up to 70, uh, you are then a premium hard coking coal. Um, and there are not many of those on the seaborne market. Australia has a handful. Um, I think there may be one or two maybe three um, uh, out of the US. Um, uh, our neighbouring um, uh, producers produce, uh, produce this coal. Uh, so it, you know, it's, 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 it's quality and it's hot coke strength uh, puts it in the, in the top echelon. Right. Okay. It, okay. Can I just talk about numbers for a bit? So how much, how much did you pay for Black Warrior and how, how much um, have you paid for, um, uh, for, for Shore Creek? So Black Warrior was replacing the reclamation bond so that the vendor gets gets um, his uh, cash back off that. So that was uh, about five, uh, 5.4 million US and then a uh, cash payment of um, um, around about uh, 5 million US as well. Um, so um, I guess 10 million all up and um, um, one cargo maybe two and that's paid for, right? Yeah. Um, so, why, so hang on, it doesn't sound like a very big deal, but w w how much money is this, do you think this is going to spin off for you, given that you've found maybe potentially 60% uh, cost savings or efficiencies? So we, we're in the process of um, transitioning from the small equipment to the big equipment now. We have the big excavator uh, on site. Uh, it, uh, it's a 3,600 uh, 3, Hitachi. We replaced a 1,200 uh, Hitachi digger. Um, got the 200 ton dump trucks arriving this month. Uh, so, so that scale transition is taking place now. Um, based on the volumes that we can generate uh, from December onwards, plus the offtake coal that I have, uh, we can load a 80,000 ton Panamax vessel every one and a half months of a, of a coal that is in the high volume uh, range. So put that in English. So basically, how many how many cargoes does it take before you 
break even or payback happens. Let's do, let's let's say next let's say next year. Let's just take next year, which is only a month away or two months away. So if there's nine cargos, if we do nine cargos of um, of Black Warrior um, next year um, in the high vol A range. High vol A is um, it's about 390, but let's be conservative and say it's 300. All right, take the 90 bucks off. So uh, 300 times, um, let me do some quick math here. Forgive me, I should know. 300 bucks times uh, 80,000 ton uh, Panamax uh, times nine. So th th there, there's 216 million US revenue. Okay, and you spent 10 million bucks plus you're leasing some equipment which you amortize over, I don't know, the life of the mine, presumably. So the payback is pretty quick. It'll be, yeah, it'll be one cargo. Um, and I'm driving operating costs down by about 60% by replacing the equipment. Um, using the existing workforce, the previous owner was operating five days uh, just five day shifts a week, so five shifts a week um, uh, on small equipment, 50 ton dump trucks, a 1200 uh, excavator. Um, so we'll increase productivity by about two and a half times. Uh, we'll add a night shift, so increase shifts to 10. Same labor costs spread across bigger but lesser equipment. Um, and that drives operating costs down by 60%. So a business that was at the margin uh, will now have its operating costs uh, reduced by about 60, 65%. Okay, fascinating. It, it, it's a nice little business in its own right. But let, let, let's talk about Shore Creek though. So again, what's the cost there? What, what's your expectation of that uh, asset? The Shore, Shore Creek was an operating open pit, operated for several decades. They, they mined the high wall down to um, what's called the um, a nickel plate and, and American coal seams, 150 feet below only 150 feet, right? sits um, um, the Mary Lee coal measures, which include the Mary Lee and the Blue Creek coal seams. Um, and these are your premium hard coking coal seams in the Black Warrior Basin. Warrior Met mines this coal, Peabody mines this coal, and, and Javelin Commodities mine this coal. So development cost 150 feet down is, is not a big number. You're looking at a drift in the order of, um, it depends where you put it, um, somewhere between 10 to 20 million US dollars to drift down into that coal and bring that drift right back to the wash plant. And there is an existing wash plant. It needs a complete refurbishment, but all the structure is there the the, the the concrete slab is there all the materials handling is there the conveyor belts the stackers as well as a direct feed barge loadout so you wash the coal you drop it on the clean pad feed straight onto the barge loadout into a barge down to um uh, mcduffie terminal in the port of mobile so give me the numbers uh, i need some dollar numbers there i want to work out what you've got i think a complete upgrade of the wash plant is between five to ten million us um, and the materials handling uh, in the barge loadout, maybe five million. So total capex, I would say twenty to thirty million. Which is nothing. Uh, okay. On an on, on an asset that uh, that will produce about one and a half million clean tons a year. Okay. So one and a half. Wow. Okay. So you're getting some pretty big numbers there. And again, the the the, the margins on the type of coal or or what at the moment? What are you getting in the open market? Uh, this coal. Uh, is is the, one of the top price coals today. It, it's trading for over four hundred bucks a ton. Um, yeah. So, uh, will that be the price when we start this mine up in two thousand and twenty three? I don't know. Uh, but you know, it probably will be uh, still very strong pricing. But but the, one of the key things about this asset is that whether you're in a bull market or a bear market, its quality will always be in demand. All right. In a beer market, it'll be that coal that commands the premium price. In the top market, then you know it, it maintains that premium pricing, and and you you, you can make fantastic margins. And, and my peers and my colleagues in Black Warrior Basin are just doing that at the moment. Um, right. Okay. Whether, yeah. So okay. So it it it's as 
it costs the same to mine this coal, extract this coal, as it does the cheaper stuff. So you're in the sort of top quartile and probably top decile in terms of what you can achieve in the open market. Right, that, that's what you're saying. So and again, with the, the scale of this as well, it, it's it's multi-decade, multi-generational. But to, to what extent? What do you know today about the size of this? Well, we we did. Well, you know, it's um, it, it's been drilled out significantly. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's not been the sub subject of a Jork uh, compliant resource statement or, or feasibility study. Um, of course, Drummond have done an enormous amount of mine planning. And uh, but because they uh, are a private company and don't have to report things uh, in compliance with JORC or 43101, you know, didn't do it. Um, so I'm going through that process at the moment. Um, uh, the initial exploration target is uh, 170 million in situ tons of coal. Now that's short tons, so let's just say that's about 150 million metric tons. Um, now that, that coal is there, we know that because there's just been there's so much drill drill hole data, but it just hasn't been reported in accordance with Jork. So it, it's got a potential very long mine life at one and a half million tons. I guess you, you assume that you would recover half of that resource, tra transform that into reserves. So I don't know, pick a number. Let's say it's 60, 70 million tons of reserves. Uh, my target rate is one and a half million tons per annum. Um, that's a that's a very long mine life. Yeah, it, it is. So, so, how much have you paid for that? Um, that that is a little bit more expensive. The reclamation bond is uh, is twelve and a half million. It's a similar deal than, than Black Warrior. I'll replace the reclamation bond. That gets returned. So it was twelve and a half million, and then a cash payment of um, four million. So about all up about sixteen million. Why? What, sorry, why? Why is everyone giving away coal projects in Alabama? What's what's, what's the problem? Well, like I said, Black Warrior was opportunistic. Um, um, Mr. Perry, the, the owner of the business, was 82 years old. and um, uh, I get that he, one. But come on, Shaw Creek. Drummond, Drummond Coal. Um, Drummond Coal um, is a legacy uh, business um, that, that was built up by um, Gary Drummond, uh, who passed away in 2016, and his father. And uh, when, when Gary passed away, um, sadly, uh, you know, the, the family members just didn't want the business anymore. Um, so management went through a process of divestment and and Drummond was predominantly an open pit coal miner. They only ever had one underground coal mine. Um, at one point in time, they had 34 drag lines operating across the US. All right, so for a family business, that that's that's not bad. Um, so so with, with not a lot of focus on underground uh, coal, developing underground coal, uh, these uh, residual um, assets, you know, are out there, and and this is this is one. You, you remember that they mined the open pit above this coal for for three decades, but they ignored the the Mary Lee Blue Creek underneath it, 150 feet below. Okay, sorry. I, I, okay, so that, that, that that's the, that's a history of, of of the company. But hang on, I, I'm I'm slightly staggered by how cheap you picked that thing up um, and what you're going to have to spend on it. It's nothing in relation to what you're going to be throwing off. Let's say if we use your number, 300 bucks, right? One and a half million tons a year. It's insane. I mean, that's a lot of money. And it also says to me, there's not going to be a lot of dilution coming up for your shareholders because you've been throwing off so much cash as well. Yeah, uh, you know this. I sound like a, I sound like a rabid shareholder. I'm, I'm not. Maybe I should be. <laughs> That's... Um, well, you know um, exactly. It's it, you know the. I've got three fantastic assets. I've got New Oak, which has has enormously gone organic growth. Right, it's 750 million tons of in situ coal across nine coal seams. We're mining the blue seam. We're now focusing on opening up the green seam by the end of next year. That's the seam above the blue. And, and, we'll, and the intention is 2023 to double what we achieve next year at New York. And then I open up another lower seam called the Allen. This is the coal seam they mined for 30 years at New York. And there's still well over 100 million tons of that coal left on the ground. And then there's another incremental step. And that, that should get New York up to around about two and a half million. Um, ton per annum. So each each mine will do 800,000 metric tons. Each mine will have two production units in it, generating 400,000 tons each. So 800,000 tons per mine, 
three mines, you know, it gives you your your 2.4, 2.5 million ton per annum. And that that that's my aim for New Oak. That's my three-year plan for New Oak. Black Warrior is there adding 600,000 tons a year, plus the offtake coal we buy to blend with Black Warrior gives us 1 million tons annualized out of Black Warrior. And then I add Shore Creek in 2023, end of 2023, that gets me up to one and a half million, gets me to a round number about 5 million. So that's my three year plan is, is to get the business up to a 5 million ton per annum producer. Okay, which is where I was going. I so said, what was the scale of the ambition here? And it, it, it seems with deals like that, I mean, so when you say, you say is that a normal situation in Alabama or, or, or you know, other states there where coal businesses are being offloaded by family? Well, because it seems to be so far it's family run. Is it, is it predominantly family run operations? You're yeah, looking at? and, and the, the, this is the situation right up Appalachia, northern, central, southern Appalachia, right, which is Black Warrior Base in southern Appalachia, Alabama. Um, it's all the same that the the landscape is dominated by family-run coal mines. Very small businesses producing ten to twenty thousand tons a month. Um, um, generally, um, severely undercapitalized, um, so they're very reliant on selling their coal week to week at the gate, at the mine gate. Um, and because their volumes are so low, you know, if, if you're doing twenty thousand tons a month and you're a family business. It's going to take you four months to load an 80,000 ton Panamax vessel. So, you know, a family business can't cash flow itself over that period. And so, you, you, you see all these businesses there uh, right throughout the Appalachia region. Uh, and, um, and typically, their coal is sold to the traders, uh, the Javelin, X Coal, AMCI. They come through all the time picking up that coal at the gate and, uh, you know, paying 50, 60, 70 bucks a ton and then selling it on the seaboard market for 200 bucks a ton. Um, and th th that's the landscape. So, 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 so tell me about this. You, you, you've been quoting prices here. You, so you haven't yet sold a, a cargo, have you? Oh, yeah. No, we've sold, um, we've sold five cargos, uh, four cargos uh, to, to Asia of New Oak, and, and that first vessel leaves uh, next week. Right, and and the pricing is as you indicated, was it? No, the price that those those four cargos were negotiated back in May when um, high volt B was one hundred and fifty bucks a ton, um, and um, we 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 negotiated at about twenty percent discount to high volt B because it's a new coal, it's an untested coal coming onto the market, so the market expects a discount until you tested it in in the steel mill coke ovens. It's pretty hard to. Uh, secure index pricing, but those four cargos were done back in May. Uh, you know, no one has a crystal ball. We didn't know where coke and coal prices were going to today, um, but um, but they're locked in, uh, and they they at our current operating costs, they will generate uh, cash, uh, positive cash flow for us. Uh, and then, of course, um, we've uh, sold our first Black Warrior cargo uh, to the seaborne market for a December, uh, one December, ten December lay can, and. Um, uh, so, so that cargo uh, will sail uh, first week of. Um, and will that be discounted as well? That will be discounted. And 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 Ex explain the, the process because I think some people are going to be looking at this and going, "Hey, you're quoting one price, you're getting another." You, the the testing is is an essential part of it because you're you're a new customer for them and this exactly. new call and you, they don't want this shutting down their operation because they got it wrong. Is that is that the gist of it? Yeah, there's a lot of science which goes into the to the blending of coking coals for coke oven feed and blast furnace feed. Um, so it does take a little bit of time uh, to add a new coal to that blend. Uh, but we, we're going through that process at the moment, moment sending samples to pro prioritised um, steel mills in Asia, um, Europe and um, Brazil. Uh, we know we've already shipped samples, but in the meantime, uh, we can send vessels at, at, at discounts to to index, but you, you're still talking fantastic profits <laughs> because of where the market is today. Um, certainly timing could not have been better. There's no doubt about it. Uh, so we, we can get to test our coal on the seaborne market in a high price environment. And once, once the sampling is done, and that'll be done in the next um, two to three months, and we can lock in index related uh, contracts uh, for, for the better part of next year and thereafter, 
uh, then we'll you know we'll experience the the premium prices for any particular brand. Okay, so you you're actually how much did you make last quarter? Can't have been very much. Revenue was just one point seven million, which right. was the legacy cash flow of um, Black Warrior. Right. Then this quarter we're looking at what I guess meaningful change on that front, are we? About 15 times that, so say 25 million US. So that's a big step up. Right. And, and the, the next quarter, again, there's going to be a bit of a step up, I would have yeah, thought, probably double, from what you said. Probably double, probably double that. So. Okay. And that would be your run rate for 2022. I guess you, you've got to, you can't do forward looking statements. I'm just trying to work out in my head what the number looks like next year. It's significant. So that, that smells like either you're going to plow it back in the ground with more acquisitions or you're going to dish out dividends as well. I hope it's no, the latter. No. Yeah, yeah, no more acquisitions. You know, like I said, we've got a got a wonderful portfolio of assets now. Um, focuses on um, building revenue, both at New Oak and Black Warrior, uh, and um, and driving um, unit costs down. Right, you could, we've got to appreciate that New York's in a startup mode, so its operating costs are going to be higher. Um, Black Warrior is in a ramp up mode, so it, it's also going to experience a higher operating costs. Uh, so once the revenue is there, then we can focus on driving unit costs down to where we want to sustain them. So by the end, of, you know, by by Q into Q1, Q2 next year, uh, we should have achieved the combination of those two. Uh, meaning by the end of next year, you know, we should have you know good retained earnings, and I am very focused on dividend distribution, very much so. Our projects going forward have very modest, extremely modest capital demands in order to achieve that big big picture that I shared before of 5 million tonne per annum, extremely modest capital demands. So our, our focus on retained earnings will be distribution. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, good, good news. Um, then you've also, you're an Aussie company, you're based in Canada, you've got, U.S. assets. You also got a Canadian asset. Um, is that progressing, or is that just on the is that on the back burner for now? Uh, no, that's progressing. Um, we are um, at long last very close to uh, lodging our application for an environmental assessment certificate. So, end of this month, um, first two weeks of December, we'll lodge that, and and that's a that's extremely critical milestone. That then activates a time regulated formal EA review process. Uh, the BC government has 180 days to review your application and then 60 days to make a decision, right? It, it has to do it as a matter of law within that time frame. Um, so that asset is, and, and that asset, assuming that is the case, and we're able to obtain that EA certificate, uh, it, 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 um, it you know, that asset does have capital demands uh, significantly greater than anything we have in the US. Uh, and, you know, that, that's something we'll, we'll I mean, relative to, to other projects, it's still quite modest. Uh, you know, our feasibility study uh, said we needed about 50 to 60 million uh, US of startup capital for that, uh, ex excluding our, um, our uh, yellow equipment, which we would lease finance. Uh, so it's still a modest number, but but significantly greater than what we're you know contemplating with our US assets. So it, it you know it, that too can all, can add another million tons of, of production, and um, that's something which you know we're not being distracted with because we're still going through the EA process. But but if by the end of the end of next year we do obtain our EA certificate, uh, then myself and my my board will be faced with you know an interesting. Um, um, decision, you know, about when we bring that asset into production.